In this video, I'm going to talk about load cases. So line smarts, as well as being able to measure uh, assets in the field as you see them, it can also perform engineering calculations on those assets to understand how they'd behave under different environmental conditions. And those environmental conditions are represented by what we call load cases, uh, which are different engineering scenarios uh, that consider the effects of different, say, uh, wind or snow or temperature on your conductors and on your structures. So on the screen here, we've got an example of how that might be used, uh, looking at your uh, wire tensions and sags. And you can see down here for each of these wires that have been uh, measured, there's a tension, there's a utilisation and a sag. And the way it's currently represented is in this load case field here, where it's showing surveyed. So we can look here, and within line smarts, there are other load cases that you can select. And these are uh, pre-selected example load cases that you get when you download uh, line smarts for the first time. So we could, for example, look at high wind, if we uh, select that, and the tensions change. They go up because you've got more load on the conductors, and the sags change and so forth. And so the same thing can be done for your ground clearances and what have you. And if we look on the, on the image here, you can see that the conductors have been blown out to the side of where the, the conductors actually were when they were surveyed. The beauty of this is that these calculations can be done by anyone. Uh, and normally that would be the domain of engineers or, or people who have had some training. But these can really be done by anyone who's learned to use the Line Smarts app. And the way it does that is that by hiding away the numbers, these load cases are, um, they are inputted beforehand. And so the person who's uh, performing the actual assessment or the engineering in the field, uh, they don't need to actually understand those numbers in the background. Now, if we go back to this main uh, page here, we can, we can look at where those load cases are defined. To do that, you need to go into the settings, and if you, you can do that by selecting the button on the, on the top right here, which is up here, and, or sometimes uh, that's not there. It, there can be a physical button on some devices at the bottom right. Uh, from there, you select settings, and we've got a variety of options here, and today we're mainly going to look at the load case library. So if we select that. And within the li load case library, we've got those four example options that uh, had previous, well, that, that are there by default. Uh, if we select on one of those, you can see that within there you've got options. You can delete that load case by selecting the, the rubbish bin there, or select the help and it'll explain all the parameters within each load case. Uh, and then we can just look through uh, those parameters. And you see there's a variety of things that you'd want to define. So th this is the example one. What you could do is you could modify that, or you, you could just change the name and use it as it is. But the main thing is what, what you'd want to do is you'd want to consider what load case scenarios you wanted for your organization. Uh, different countries uh, use different standards, and e even different organizations may use different engineering standards that you'd want to really reflect in the load cases that are defined. And this is probably something that you'd want to be done by someone who's got some technical expertise in terms of the engineering that you're meant to be doing on your overhead lines. So either you'd want to have the expert setting up these libraries or else specifying what should be inputted into the libraries. The way we've designed the various uh, load case parameters so that what you can do is you, you should be able to create or represent any standard that you'll find around the world. Different countries, different standards, they can be quite different and we've tried to accommodate that and we'd be very keen to hear if anyone runs into problems trying to implement their standards. So as well as having the example load cases here, what we can do is we can create one from scratch. So if we click on this plus here, top right, and that takes us to a brand new load case that we can define. So I can put in a name here, say high temperature. And then we can go through the various parameters and fill out what they might be. So in this case, I'll say 50 degrees Celsius. 
And uh, because we've selected the metric system, it's showing Celsius. If it was imperial, then it would uh, show Fahrenheit. Then we can have wind speed. In this case, we won't use the wind speed. But what you'll find if you do want to put in wind sp speed, we'll put one in here. Once you put in the wind speed in terms of meters per second, it'll calculate your pressure. And vice versa, if we put in a pressure here, it'll back calculate the wind speed. But we'll just leave that at zero. Oops. So if I put that as zero, it'll cancel that out. The other thing we can add here is radial ice thickness. It's been pre-populated with an ice density, but that can be modified uh, if you'd like. Uh, there's also snow thickness that you can put in. And then there's, uh, you can have a drag coefficient that relates to having that ice or snow. We've got other parameters here, having a multiplier for the weight force and um, also for the, the tension. Uh, sometimes uh, when you're creating your load, some uh, standards will uh, require that you have a, a tension multiplier. The final parameter that you want to define within your load case is this limit state load type. And if we select that, you can see that you can select from vibration, serviceability, damage, and ultimate. So the way we've done things is uh, lends itself, or it's, it's, it's directed towards using limit state standards, but it'll also accommodate other uh, working stress methods or what have you, uh, traditional engineering approaches. And how this is used is if we look, uh, if we go back and we look un in the conductor library, and if we just select one of the conductors, I'll just take the first on the list, and you see down here, we've got ultimate limit uh, percent UTS, damage limit percent UTS, serviceability limit, and vibration limit. Uh, the percentage of your ultimate tensile strength of your, your conductor. These are your conductor material strength factors that relate to the load case that you're putting in. Sometimes you might have a load case that's specific to a certain limit state. And so this allows you to reflect that. Now if we go back to our load case library, you can see that uh, having done that, we, we'd gone and in, uh, entered the, that high temperature load case. And so you could add more, um, you could reduce some and have fewer load cases. But this is where you can do it. And that will define the list that you see. So if we would go back to our original example, what we'll see if we go in here, to the catenaries. We can go in here and high temperature is down the bottom there.